Growing hardwood ceilings in Pennsylvania is a hard thing to do. You put a deer fence around them and the meadow mice eat them. You put a short tube around them and the rabbits eat them. What's the guy supposed to do? Let's talk about tree tubes. Foresters disagree more about tree tubes than any other silvicultural practice. Sometimes you don't need tree tubes. Sometimes it seems like you can't do without them. Bernard Sweeney from Stroud Water Research Center claims that seedlings protected by tree shelters exhibit on the average about 39% higher survival and 300% greater growth after five years than seedlings without shelters. On the other hand, Kim Steiner and Tim Phelps from Penn State using four foot solid tubes on chestnut trees in a forested setting claim that sheltered trees had a higher growth rate the first three years but the trees that were unsheltered caught up in the fourth and fifth years. Here's a scene of a mountain where you have evergreens growing on one point of the mountain and no evergreens growing on the other. Somehow or other nature has decided to make a different ecosystem on the point of these mountains. Here's a stream going up between the mountains. On the left hand side of the stream you see a lot of hemlocks growing. On the right hand side no hemlocks are growing. Here's another picture on upstream. On the left hand side you see hemlocks growing. On the right hand side no hemlocks. Here's what's happening there. This stream is down between two big mountains. Mountain range on each side. The sun comes up to the left and shines over on the right hand side of the stream warming up the soil. But it doesn't shine down on the hemlocks until 11 or 12 o'clock and by 2 o'clock it disappears to the right over top the mountains in no direct sunlight. So the right hand side of the stream gets a lot more heat than the left hand side. And that's why you have hemlocks on one side and not on the other. On which side of the mountain do hardwood trees grow best on? The north or the south? On the north side. Pennsylvania hardwood trees do not like to get too warm. The way to grow hardwoods is to keep the roots warm and the tops cool. Tree tubes work because they create a mini ecosystem around the tree. The greenhouse effect can be good for your trees, but too much of it can be harmful, even lethal. The theory is that the protector creates a mini greenhouse for the tree, and this helps the tree. Good in theory, but in practice it seldom works that well. In the summer, some tree protectors actually cause the temperatures inside to rise so high that the trees will wilt, sometimes even die. That's from Tom Mill, president of TreePro. To make a tree tube work, you must create a mini climate near the tree. It's the, not the environment in the tube, but the environment around the tube that's important. Here's a telephone pole with the snow melting around it. The sunlight's coming down, striking the pole, and making a heat ring around the pole so it melts the snow. Here's a clothesline pole in the backyard. It has the same heat ring around it. It doesn't matter how tall these poles are, they still have the same size heat ring around them. Here's a tree tube with four and a half foot open mesh on the top. You need four and a half feet to protect from deer browse and a 16 inch solid tube on the bottom. The 16 inch solid tube produces the same size heat ring in the snow that the telephone pole did. Here's an orchard with tree tubes. Each tree tube is creating a heat ring and melting the snow around the base of the tree tubes. Let's look at Dave Jackson's experiment. This is an experiment on the growth effects of different types of solid tree tubes. The first year in the, in the Jackson plots, we had on the left hand side no tree tubes, 16 inch tubes, 18 inch tubes, 2 foot tubes, and 4 foot tubes. All of the tree tubes did good and all are about the same height, except where we had no tree tube. The reason for that was there was no heat ring produced around there, and so it lagged behind the other trees. Let's look at the second year of the Jackson trees. The 16 inch tubes and the 2 foot tubes actually had taller trees than the 4 foot tube had. We we're starting to get too much heat in the 4 foot tubes and they're starting to drop behind. Let's look at those two years put together. The first year things were fairly consistent but the second year things got all out of kelter. Let's look at this experiment at the end of four growing seasons. On the left we have no tubes, 16 inch tubes, 18 inch tubes, 
24 inch tubes and 48 inch tubes. If you look at the height of the 48 trees in the 48 inch tubes, they were the shortest trees. They're getting too much heat and retarding their height. Actually, where you had no tree tubes on the left is slightly higher than where you had the 48 inch tree tubes. The 16s, 18s, and 24 were all quite a bit higher. Let's look at the bottom at the survival rate. The survival rate on the right at the 48 inch tubes was only 67%. On the left with no tube at all, the survival rate was 87%. But in the 16s, 18s, and 24 inch tubes, we had 93% survival rate. The effectiveness of a tree tube is not what happens inside the tube, but what happens outside the tube. What happens inside can be negative. The sunlight reflects off the solid bottom of the tube and heats the soil outside it. This can be observed by watching the snow melt around the tube in early spring. This warms the ground earlier in the spring and keeps it warm longer in the fall, increasing the length of the growing season in this mini ecosystem around the seedling. In solid tubes taller than two feet, too much heat is trapped inside the tube and causes the seedling to dry out. The seedling does not get wind strong and bends over it when it comes out the top of the tube. Both of these problems can be eliminated by using open air mesh for the top of the tube. Here are some three year old sugar maples that got wind strong in the open air mesh and grew right up out of the tubes without any bending. This shows the advantage of open air mesh in tubes. Here's the yellow poplar growing in heavy conservation cover. We spray around the tube and keep the grass away from the tree. And this creates a mini eco area so that the tube can heat the soil. We call this our tip system, tree incubation and protection system. The way to grow hardwood seedlings successful in tree tubes is, number one, keep the roots warm and the tops cool. Number two, use a good stake no tree tube will work laying flat on the ground. And number three, use a good seedling. No tree tube will make a dead tree grow. Follow these directions and with a little luck, you'll produce a good tree. The oak swamp bottom do drop falling. Our old Tom answer in a hoot house calling. Nothing like the sound when the day breaks. Me and Daddy in the woods on a Saturday. You see his granddad. He hunted these hills And I hope someday that my kids will He said to do me a favor before I'm gone Love this land and pass it on Pass it on He showed me how to cast a line Where the white tail live and how to read their sign My gun up against a tree So he could hold a barbed wire fence for me Yeah, I learned a lot from watching his ways Like how to hunt smart and how to be safe He said, in one of these days, son, you'll be grown Remember what I taught you and pass it on 